We are now turning our attention in the pathogenic gin parade to human papillomavirus. So what are its properties? There are about a hundred types of human papillomavirus. They cause warts or other types of infection of the skin and mucosal membranes. This virus is double-stranded. It has a circular DNA genome of about 8,000 base pairs. Papillomaviruses are not enveloped. They don't have a membrane around them. They have a protein capsid, and this is a 20-sided capsid, which is called an icosahedral capsid. Types are tissue-specific for infecting. For example, they can affect the skin or mucosa. Replication is determined by host cell differentiation state. So they will first infect basal cells in the bottom of the surface of the, whatever they're infecting. And as those cells differentiate, the virus replicates more and more, etc. So why are they here? Why is this important? Two things. This is another example of a sexually transmitted disease in uh, human papillomavirus. And HPV can cause cervical cancer. More properties of HPV. HPV may be the world's most prevalent sexually transmitted disease. About 42.5 million people in the U.S. are currently infected. The virus is acquired by close contact. HPV is present in 99.7% of all cervical cancers. It is the major cause of cervical cancer. These are mostly type 16, 18, 31, 45, and sometimes also type 6 and 11. Again, you don't need to know that, but it's just a small cluster of the 100 or so papillomaviruses that can cause this. Importantly, cervical cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death for women in the U.S. But HPV can also cause penal, anal, head, and neck cancer in men. In women, a pap smear is used to diagnose aberrant cells that are moving towards cancer. So HPV pathogenesis. Note, most viruses don't really have virulence factors in the classic sense of thinking about toxins and capsules and pili and stuff like that. Their damage is caused by their replication and the immune system trying to prevent that replication. HPV replicates at low levels in base epithelia. Right, so that's here, right here on the bottom in the base epithelia. As these cells differentiate and grow, right, and build up the layers of the epithelia, uh, replication rates increase, and these infections can last for years. Cervical cancer is associated with a few types of HPV, like I said, mostly HPV 16 and 18. And what happens is the virus inserts into the genome and it causes changes in cell regulation. It gets rid of some of the things that stop and prevent cells from regulating out of control. When that happens, there's issues. Okay, finally, treatment of HPV. HPV has a vaccine, and the CCC began recommending the HPV vaccine for young women in 2006. It has since been expanded to young men. So why young? Why around the age of 12? Because that is before young adults become sexually active so they can be immunized against this disease before that time. Now, does it work? Yes, the HPV vaccine has cut the rate of cervical cancer by 85%. And this is what this graph shows. If you look at this graph and you're looking at the age and diagnosis of cervical cancer, if you look you can see that uh, children that were vaccinated at less than 17 years of age, there's almost no incidence of cervical cancer in these patients. Those that were vaccinated in between the ages of 17 to 30, there is some increase, but then it you know, levels off and decreases. And then in the vaccinated, you see much higher incidences of cervical cancer. So clearly, this vaccine is protective and it's something that you should do. All right, that is it for the HPV vaccine and for human papillomavirus.